So what is a process? Process, especially in, in context of Windows, is basically just an instance of an executable. Now, what does that mean in simple English? Basically, imagine a box that houses everything needed for a program to run the executable code. Now, what is a program or an executable code? It's simply all the applications that you see on your computer. Now, a program or an application, whatever you want to call it, can have many processes running at once. Moreover, an application like your web browser will spawn new process for every tab that you create and see. We can also see some extra information like how much memory, open a shell, run a command, it will run as a new process. Some processes can also create their own processes, which are lovingly called their child processes, like a nuclear family of computer architect. Oh, one more thing. This family is basically blind. Now, what does that mean? It's a blind family. One process isn't aware of another process outside of its own existence. So imagine if this is a process alpha and you're a process beta. <laughs> they don't know about each other. So process has its own virtual address space or VA space, which it believes is exclusively allocated to itself. What it means is it thinks all of this memory is for itself. However, what you might see as a single application or a program may in fact be a collection of multiple, multiple processes working together through something like Task Manager that you can find on your Windows. We can see that there are three types of processes, application process, background process, and window processes. So application processes are the process that are launched to run a specific program. If you open up an application like RAM Eater, <clears throat> I mean Chrome, there's an application process. You can see that this process spawn in the task manager and it can be terminated by the user that someone did. Now the background processes are the processes that run in the background. Well, too much explanation, right? But they don't require user interaction. They get started automatically, meaning that you don't need to go in and start this one by one. Although you definitely could have a process that start off as an application or an app process and then run in the background process. These are the type of processes responsible for some important system related tasks like updating software, scheduling backups, monitoring your system like antivirus, uh, etc, etc. And then there are the system level processes. These are vital for proper functioning of the Windows operating system. They automatically get launched upon startup and perform critical tasks such as memory management, security device drivers, and so on, so on. One more thing that the window will provide a priority level to each of the processes, which can manually be changed as well. Now the priority is just a measure of the amount of time that your CPU spends processing instructions for a specific task. Okay, now there are six of these priority ratings and here are they from the lowest to the highest. The one to know are the real time, normal and low, since the other ones are kind of just self-explanatory. If a process has been assigned a low priority, it will only be given this precious sweet sweet cpu time when there are no other higher priority processes running normal is the default process priority that most applications get when they are given a fair share of cpu time and real time is the highest priority level that a process can be assigned to in the windows they are given exclusive access to the cpu time okay they are guaranteed to be the executed or be scheduled by the scheduling system of your operating system which without getting too far into it, the scheduling system in Windows is responsible for managing the execution of a process and for how long, you know, based on their aforementioned priority levels and some other factors which highly oversimplified, but maybe in another video, the operating system will give your processes some very useful information, including but not limited to process identifier or PID. A PID is the location of the executable file that the process come from. This is called the image path command line. So these are any command line arguments that have been supplied to this process that get allocated a virtual memory. But a process can also take up CPU time, which means that the more processes you will have running, the slower your computer will objectively be because of all the resources that these it's not a little processes is using up. Obviously, there's way more to processes than, than you see here. Like we haven't even talked about the priority scheduling algorithm or the scheduler itself, but we will have to revisit that another time because right now, this is more than enough to get started being a malware developer. Now, if you ever get a super high CPU intensive process and you set that thing to real time priority, 
like say for some reason you wanted to play Minecraft on your computer or for whatever reason because you have had that CPU intensive thing on real time, the other processes like the things that handle your input and on output like your mouse, your keyboard, everything likely that would lag behind. Here we can see that the real time priority is really dangerous. It's higher priority than nearly everything else. It's higher priority than mouse input, keyboard input, and the disk cache itself if you foolishly set the priority class of a CPU intense program like Minecraft to real time. It will suck up all the entire process leaving it no cycle for anything else. By the way, we need to be comfortable with this because the next thing we will be talking about is the thread. Okay, each process is started with a single thread, which is often called the primary or the main thread. But a process could also have multiple threads, just like an application can have multiple processes. These processes may have multiple tiny little threads, which are responsible for different tasks within the process. By the way, having multiple threads in a single process is called multi-threading and it is extremely useful and prevalent in modern application since it provides responsiveness, better resource utilization, and most importantly, the ability to perform multiple tasks. And more processes can also create additional thread from any of its thread. And thread and processes are very similar. They're both unit of execution. There were some general differences between the two. First of all, a thread is a light feather falling through the sky, so elegantly, so graceful, that a process is a Soviet submarine crashing into the ground. <laughs> okay, I'm exaggerating a little bit. But threads are lightweight and processes are not. Processes consume much more resources. If a process is a team working on a project, then thread is like a team member with a specific task that each team member has their own role to play. One more thing is processes are independent of each other and threads, however, are interdependent and share memory within the process. Just as processes have their IDs and handles or whatever to describe them or interact with them, so do the threads. They have got IDs, they have got handles as well. Great thing about these threads, as we will see later on this, is just like processes, we can create our own thread within our script or within our target process. This is to run our own stuff. This is huge for most of the process injection techniques that we will cover later since we're going to be starting some threads to actually run our own code. In the next section, we will be talking about handles. Okay, so we will be spending a lot of times to create handles that during our malware development section, this will become one important piece. Okay, without talking too much gibberish, I hope you understand the concept of processes and threads for now. Go to the task manager and look for different processes and threads it creates. And I will see you in the next section talking about handles and further malware development.